Hi, welcome to Bad Movie Reviews. Definitely not Boston. Pet Cemetery is a bloodless bastardization of its source material that sinks under its own uninspired storytelling and horror movie cliches. One of the problems with Pet Cemetery is that it gives viewers absolutely no reason to care about anything that happens to the Creed family. Clark and C. Mets don't have a lick of chemistry, and the film's plot unfolds at such a mercenary pace that there's no room for substantial character development. It was a myth. Kids used to dare each other to go into the woods. Rachel explains her morbid fear of death to Louis with little prompting, which is strange considering she's apparently withheld this information from him for the entirety of their marriage. Judd Ziri stories about old townspeople's ill-fated brushes with the pet cemetery get relegated to a Google Archive search. Long to something else. Clark plays Lewis with such stony detachment that it's hard to imagine any sort of conflict raging inside him. In King's original novel, Lewis' mission to resurrect his dead child ran parallel with his own descent into madness. Here, he reaches the decision as if it's the most logical thing in the world, showing little fear or remorse for his actions. Only after Ellie returns does Lewis begin to consider the error of his ways. <laughs> The terror does intensify once Sally comes home, and Lawrence plays the demented side of her character well, even if that character is just a berate composite of living dead girl tropes from The Ring and The Exorcist. She comes off as more taunting than terrifying, and by introducing her to the rest of the family, the film eliminates the element of isolation that caused Louis to lose his grip on reality when he carried out the deed in secret in the book. L.A. discovered a charming little landmark. None of this stops Ellie from wreaking havoc, starting with her pesky neighbor Judd and then focusing on her own family. It's here that Pet Cemetery makes its biggest and most egregious deviation from the source material, with a new ending that dilutes one of the book's central themes, that weak men will go to any length to get what they want, and will continue to make the same mistakes even after their decisions come back to bite them. It's not some campfire story. Saw these in the trees up there. King initially deemed Pet Cemetery too horrifying and nihilistic to publish. But beneath a near impenetrable blackness exists a breathlessly entertaining novel that dares readers to consider the threshold for human suffering and the ethical and metaphysical implications of life after death. This latest big screen adaptation asks no such questions and captures none of the mysticism or nuance of King's novel. That cat was dead. That brings things back. Church? The more one thinks about it, the more one comes to the conclusion that there are two ways of looking at Pet Cemetery. For some, the first two acts will feel a little ponderous and occasionally very funny before the tone shifts in the third act, the gore ramps up and it ends on a potentially savage note. For others, the first two acts will feel almost thoughtful, a meditation on the nature of grief with occasional very funny moments and a third act that feels excessively graphic and a little like a punchline. I should never have shown you that place. Your child is not the only thing that will come back. As with all Stephen King stories, there are resonant universal themes running through Peck Cemetery. Guilt, grief and trauma fuel this tale of a family who move to the countryside and become embroiled with an ancient evil. Yet these are buried deep under a mudslide of horror cliches, jump scares, creepy kids, expositional newspaper headlines, that reduce this to just another run-of-the-mill horror remake. <laughs> Any such psychological explorations are overwhelmed by the filmmaker's need to provide easy scares. Aside from the genuinely horrifying sequence in which Ellie meets her end, there is nothing here that hasn't been seen at infinitum, whispering shadows, booming jump cuts, foreboding woods. And while shots of the main scenery are beautiful and haunting, 
The film was made in Montreal and some of the key sequences play out on sets that are so obviously man-made as to be entirely distracting. More Wooden Still is the screenplay, stuffed full of clunky dialogue.